In this tutorial, you will learn how to install the Redmine Pro Management System on Debian 10 in the cloud on the Amazon Lightsell service. So Redmine is basically a flexible project management web application written using the Ruby on Rails framework. It is cross-platform and also cross-database, and it is also an open source system released under the terms of the general public license version 2. Some of the main features of Redmine are multiple project support, flexible role-based access control, flexible issue tracking, news and documents and files management, per project forums, time tracking, and a lot more features and uh, functionality. So in whatever field that you currently work in, you can actually actively use Redmine to actually manage your work. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to actually first deploy the actual Debian 10 instance in the Amazon Lightsell uh, dash dashboard. So click on the Create Instance button to start the instance creation process. Click on OS only, choose the Debian 10.8 uh, instance type, select the $10 plan, and then on the Identify your instance input box, set the name for the instance to Redmine Server, and then click on the Create Instance button. So copy the public IP address for the instance, and then uh, open up the Amazon Route 53 service. So on the dashboard, click on the hosted zones link. And then what I now need you to do is to then click on any one hosted zone for any of your registered domain names. Click on the create record button. And then on the record name field, set the record name to Redmine server, whatever your custom host name is actually. And then on the value field, paste in the public IP address for the instance, and then click on the create records button. So we've actually successfully de uh, created an A record that actually maps to the Redmine uh, Debian 10 instance. The next thing you need to do is you need to download the, the default key file that actually allows us to connect to this instance via SSH. And then just go to your download directory and rename this key file to redminekey.pen. And then once you've actually renamed the key, Open up your terminal application and change your working directory to the downloads directory. And then run the command chmod400 redminekey.pem. And then to connect to the instance via SSH, run the command sshi redminekey.pem. And then use the username. Let me actually just check the username quick. So the username should be admin. So I'm just going to actually type in admin in the command and then uh, specify the at symbol and then let me just check the public IP address for the instance so I'm just going to copy that and paste that into the terminal window so just press enter and uh, when you get a key fingerprint prompt just type in yes and press enter and you should now be connected to this uh, instance via SSH so the next thing that I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to um, download uh, some system updates. So just run the command apt update to actually download and install some essential updates that we actually need to complete this uh, setup. And then the next thing you need, then need to do is we then need to run the command uh, hostname ctl, set hostname, and in my case, I'm just going to set the hostname to uh, red mine server. But in your case, you can set it to whatever hostname you'd like or you can follow the naming convention that I've actually used in this case. So and then next, you then need to edit the host configuration file. I'm just going to remove the default uh, host name that, that has actually been assigned to this instance. So I'm just backspacing out of that, and then I'm going to set it to redmineserver.mydomainname.com, and then redmineserver at the end. And then finally, to make sure that this custom configuration persists across reboots, you then need to edit the cloud.cfg configuration file. And in this file, you need to set the preserve hostname parameter to true so that whenever these, this instance actually reboots, the hostname won't be changed to the default parameter. So I'm just going to set it to true and then press Control O, press Enter, and then press Control X to exit out of this uh, configuration file. And then I'm just going to reboot this instance so that the changes that we've actually made will actually take effect. So the next thing that we're going to do is we'll, is we're going to download Apache, MariaDB, PHP, as well as the Redmine web application. 
So what I need you to do now is you, I need you to reconnect to this instance via SSH. So just rerun the connection uh, command that we used earlier. And I've actually prepared a document that you can actually follow along for you to quickly and uh, easily follow along this tutorial. So copy that first command and paste that into your terminal window. So this will just uh, download uh, some essential uh, dependencies that we actually need for this installation. And then next we're then going to download and install Apache MariaDB as well as some PHP modules that we actually need for this uh, installation. So once that's actually done, the next thing that we're actually going to do is we're going to connect to the MariaDB database shell and we're going to create a new database. So we're actually just going to name this database the uh, Redmine DB. And then I'm actually now going to then create a user as well as a password for that database user actually by running that command. So just copy and paste that command. And then finally, you just need to then flush privileges and exit out of the MariaDB database uh, shell. So just type in exit and press enter once you've actually run through all of those commands. So once that's actually done, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a Redmine red user so that things are a bit more secure. I actually don't recommend run, running Redmine as, as, as a root. So we're just going to add a Redmine user and then we're going to set that user to have access to the www data um, group actually. And then I'm just going to change to that user and then I'm going to download the uh, zipped uh, archive file for the red uh, mine application. So the next thing you need to do is you now need to decompress that uh, archive file that you've actually just downloaded. So actually going to be extracting that file to the opt directory. And then next you then need to then uh, run these commands that I'm actually copying now to then um, set a few configuration files into effect because when you actually download the Redmine application, these files are actually set as, as .example files. So you just need to copy these files but removing the .example extension so that it just remains as a file named .yaml file, of which the most important file in this case is the database.yaml file. So I'm just actually going to edit that file now and then in this file, I'm just going to specify my uh, database parameters. So in this case, uh, I'm actually going to type in my database name, which is RedmineDB. So I'm just going to say DB at the end there. And then I'm going to type in the username that I actually created earlier. So let me just uh, set the username, which is RedmineUser. And then I'm then just going to type in the database password for this user. Sorry, the password for this user actually. And then uh, you then need to save your changes and then exit out of that file. So um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our working directory to the CD, um, sorry, to the opt redmine directory. Um, so in this directory, we then need to then run a special command that will actually uh, install an, a component called bundler using the gem uh, utility. So I've actually installed that and then you then need to again change to the red uh, mine user and then you just need to run through these commands to also then go forward to then install some essential components that are needed by the red mine application to actually run successfully. So once you've actually run through these commands you just need to run each command one at a time uh, let me just see the command that we actually, so in this case, we're now generating a secret token. And then I'm just then going to run through some exports that are actually needed by the application. So once you've actually run through those two commands, let me, but I think there's no need to run that command actually, but I'm just going to run it anyway. The next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to create some important direct temporary directories and then we're then going to then change the ownership of the uh, redmine file directories to the redmine user and then next i'm then going to set the permissions for the files and directories that are within the redmine directory 
and then finally we're then going to create an apache virtual host configuration file that then tells apache of how to actually load up the redmine application so i'm just going to change the server name parameter there to my custom host name which is actually redmine server dot my domain name dot com and then once you've actually also made your own custom changes you then need to exit out of this file and then there's another command that you then need to run to actually inform apache of the existence of this uh, uh, configuration file so the command is a 2 en site redmine and then finally we're just going to restart the apache service so that all of the changes that we've actually made will actually take effect so next i'm then going to load up the redmine uh, web, web, web based dashboard you just need to click on the sign in button and you can actually sign in using the default administrator account but the first time that you sign in it will actually ask you to set a new password so i'm just going to be typing in a new password real quick i think the old password should be admin there and it shouldn't be my new password so i'm just going to remove that and then type in admin and then click on apply so you now need to then set up your first name, your last name, your email address, your language, and whether to enable the um, two-factor authenticator application. That's all optional. I actually recommend that you actually set a two-factor auth app, if, especially if it's, this is actually going to be in a production environment. So I'm just going to load the, load the default configuration for the Redmine um, application. And then let's just create a project so just click on projects and then click on the new project projects link so i'm just going to set the name of this project to my first uh, project and then i'm just going to copy that and then paste that into the project description here you can you can actually choose a home page but I, th I think i don't have one set so i'm just going to create the project so if you then um check at the top uh, uh, left corner of the page you actually see the name of the new project that we've actually just created you can actually check issues that have been actually submitted by your users you can actually create even a wiki for this project and a whole bunch of other stuff that can be really helpful to actually m ensure that your project becomes a success so basically that's been it guys that's how there's a quick look at how you can install the redmine application I hope this tutorial has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.